Is that why? Okay, my son is on now. Hi, welcome to my channel, Takuya Kichero. Today is September 19th, Thursday, 2024. So my last video was like maybe a day or two ago. Um, I've been busy with projects and things like that, etc., etc. Um, so before I get started, I want to remind anyone that's watching that these messages are not going to resonate with everyone, and that's okay if they resonate with you. Because you clearly great. If it does not, then don't force it to be your story. All right. You know, it's so crazy because I was going to do this reading, like, about four hours ago. But here we are, right? It's quiet. Alright, that's not bad at all then. My sage is quiet today. Usually it's very loud. Alright. I'm going to use this deck today, my angel tarot. So, today, today is what, Thursday, right? We are in the middle of, oh, excuse me, the month. Last night was a full moon, beautiful, wow, wow, wow. It was a beautiful full moon. That's not the buck moon, right? Let me double check something. No, the buck moon is in July. Uh, oh, you know what, too? Um... This morning, when I went to sleep, um, I saw Galatians 4.17. It was just that. And I looked it up, and it's basically talking about people who pull you in that are overzealous to have your energy around them to bring you close to them. And then once you're around them, they will shut you out. Right? I'm going to look up the... Um, verse in a second but I closed my eyes and that was like I saw Galatians right and I was like Galatians I know that's a book in the Bible and I'm like and I'm asking I'm like okay Galatians what and it was like 417 I was like okay I'm gonna look up Galatians 417 but there's something I'm going to look up the um there was a full moon last night <sighs> what month are we in September The Harvest Moon? That cannot be the name, is it? The Full Corn Moon. And I know Pocahontas sings a song, right? But she says the Blue Corn Moon. Under the Blue Corn Moon. Hi, my baby. So. It's charging. It's charging. Okay, never mind. It's okay. So yeah, the full corn moon, which is September. This moon is also sometimes named the barley moon. It is often the nearest full moon to the autumnal equinox, entering, earning the title of harvest moon. Ah, harvest moon. So you are harvesting something, right? The season of harvest, whatever you planted throughout the summer, throughout the spring, you're now harvesting. So whatever you've been, whatever seeds you planted in the spring and in the summer, you're I'm also hearing collecting. You're collecting it. Um, my temple's very, very itchy for some reason. You're collecting it. You're storing it. I'm also hearing cashing. Like, you can... Um, but that's in the term of, like, saving. Right? Like, um... 
like the way squirrels do it, they would bury their nuts and then save it away for like the winter or something like that, right? And like birds do that. Some birds, not all birds, some birds like I think crows do that. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. All right, let me um, move on now because what was it? Galatians, yeah, there it is. Galatians four seventeen. In the NIV version of the Bible, I um, there's different versions of the Bibles. Obviously, um, I'm more familiar with King James version. That's because that's the version I grew up with. But basically it says, Those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. What they want is to alienate you from us so that you may have zeal for them. So it's basically, it's like, come over here, come over here. And then you join them, and then they will, like, shut you out. Just so you could, like, but wait, wait, I'm over here, I'm over here, wait, wait. Right? But it's basically just kind of like, it's like, come join us. Right? And you could already be on a team, um, in a group. Um, you could already belong somewhere. But I'm also getting that you belong somewhere, but it doesn't show. Or you don't show it. Or you don't talk about it. But you're already, like, part of something. It just doesn't really show. So I feel like that's kind of, like, a way... Like, I feel like because of that, people are just like, Oh, the collective is by themselves. They're, they're standing alone. They're by themselves. They're like a sitting duck. Let's, let's bring them over here, right? So there are other versions. Um, the NASB is... They eagerly seek you, not in a commendable way. That's the second time my nose has gotten, like, stuffy like that. Hmm. Be careful of people who, um, invite you out to parties because they just want to invite you out to parties just to get you under substances. Um, so the NASB version, they eagerly seek you, not in a commendable way, but they want to shut you out, so that way you will seek them, alright? That's really what that is, and I heard that, um, I, I closed my eyes, and it's always, <laughs> alright, I'm not gonna say that, but I closed my eyes, and then I heard Galatians, and I was like, okay, I know that's a Bible, I know that's a book in the Bible, and I was like, okay, so what about Galatians, you gotta tell me, you gotta give me a little bit more, right? Like, right, I'm not gonna be on a needle in a haystack search in the Bible of Galatians, you gotta give me something, right? And it was like 417. And that's what, um, I looked it up. So. Actually, I have a King James Version. Let me look it up in my version. <laughs> oh. Alright, so I just like bumped my elbow. So some of you are probably going to run into somebody you don't want to see. Or you haven't seen in a while. This is my precious moments Bible. I've had this since I was a child. Since I was a little baby. Yeah, this thing is old. I'm not even sure where Galatians is, to be honest with you. I just know that it is a book in the Bible. The book of Revelations. That's my favorite book. That could be the Scorpio in me, but that could just be like... Zephaniah, Micah, Daniel... What was that? Amos, Ezekiel... Jeremiah, oh boy, oh, oh, oh. Isaiah, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Proverbs, it's another book I like a lot, Psalms as well, Job, Esther, Nehemiah, Ezra, that's such a great name, Ezra, Chronicles, Samuel, Kings, Oh, wait. Is that it? No, that's Chronicles. Actually, I really don't. Judges, Joshua, Deuteronomy, Numbers. 
Leviticus, that's another good one. Exodus, that's a good one too. What is that? I have something underlined here. I feel like I'm getting sidetracked. I feel like there's like so many things I want to do now. So you gotta give me a second. Alright, I can't, I can't. I'm getting sidetracked. Where is, um, isn't there like a... This version was printed out in 1984, by the way. Galatians 1008. It's in the New Testament. So Galatians is in the New Testament. And in the King James Version Bible, Precious Moments to be exact, it's page 1008. All right, Galatians, what was it? 4, chapter 4, verse 17. They zealously court you, but for no good. Yes, they want to exclude you, that you may be zealous for them. But it is good to be zealous and a good thing always, not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I labor and birth again until Christ is formed in you, I would like to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I have doubts about you. Ooh. There's also something about a, a child, right? I just saw 1201 because it says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all. Basically, there was something about um, in Galatians in, in, this, in this chapter, chapter 4, right? Up to like 20, but it's basically saying that there is a child who is the heir of a throne, but as long as that child does not grow up, then it's not really going to... Um, they're not really going to be able to walk into the power. They're going to have the same power as a slave. No power, being naive, being told what to do, etc., etc., right? Um, but then it talks about only then when the child grows up, then it can inherit the throne. So I feel like you were always supposed to have something since you were a child and somebody wanted you to always chase after them, always want them, always need them always be like a child like always chasing after the mama or the papa right or friends and family like you're you're always going to be a child when you always when you're always like that it's like when you grow up right and you're just like don't like i don't need to be in that group i don't need to be with them i don't need to be friends with them etc etc that's only then when you are like that then you like oh, grow up you start thinking for yourself and walking for yourself and standing for yourself and then you can inherit what is truly yours because you're inheriting it for you and you're receiving the power for you and you're using it the way you are supposed to be using it it's not like you would inherit this power but you're giving it to everybody else to please them and make them happy and because everyone's just like like oh you should let us use your power and we'll give it back to you Right, and then you never get your power back. That's not all, you know. So, uh, that's that. Yeah, see, but then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not God. So that could be human, that could be other deities, that could be other false prophets, false god. That could be men, right? But now, after you have known God, or rather, are known by God, so you know God and God knows you. So you guys are like that now. Do you need help with it, baby? Give me one second. I want a house. You want a house? I'll build you a house. Why is this like that? It's Hold on. We gotta start over. Hold on. Zach. 
That's <laughs> you. Okay, and it says, but now after you have, oh, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? So this is basically talking about, you know what you know, but for some reason, you could be like, Still choosing to keep yourself in some sort of bondage, like restraints or things that are just like beneath you. Beggarly elements where people are your like people are having you beg for their attention, their time, their friendship. Um for some of you you're like begging for hours at a job. For others of you it's like begging for love, begging for like scraps of it's like people are just like come join us right and then you'll join them and then they like breadcrumb you and give you scraps and it's just like God is like but you're way worth more than that and you know that and this is beneath you literally you're begging for scraps from things that are beneath you you observe days and months and seasons and years I am afraid for you lest I have labored for you in vain. So I feel like as you're going through this harvest, you're enjoying this harvest, but at the same time, you're not 100% appreciative of this harvest because you're still begging for scraps. And it's kind of like the angels would see that and it's like it disappoints them it makes them sad it makes them want to cry because it's like you have all of these beautiful things all you have all this you have all this power all this abundance all this magic whatever and you're begging for scraps from things and people that are beneath you that's going to make angels cry and your ancestors and your spirits and your guys that's going to make them cry because it's like we did all of this and you did all of this but here you are begging for scraps when you don't need to do that you are walking and you have inherited power and gifts and abilities and skills and etc 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 et et right so I feel like they just don't want to see that of you begging for scraps when you don't have to. You don't need to. Oh. <sighs> So I feel like you could have told somebody the truth or somebody is telling you the truth and they want you to be an enemy. Because it says, what then was the blessing you enjoyed? For I bear you witness that if possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They zealously court you, but for no good. So you could have told somebody... That there is a group of people, there's a person that's no good for you. That they just, whatever, whatever. So you, it's crazy because I had a dream, I think it was like a year ago. And I was in the dream, I was telling this girl. She had like blonde hair, very, very skinny. I was telling her about a, a man, a man that I knew in, out here. And I was telling her that the man was no good. And she got mad at me because she thought I was trying to prevent her from experiencing that man and being with that man. But I was giving her warnings out of um, experience, right? But this was all in the dream. But this was about a person that we all knew in real, like out here, all right? But I was having this conversation with her in the dream. So you could have told somebody that this person is no good. And they didn't believe you. They didn't want to hear it from you. And so they made you their enemy. 
And that same person that made you their enemy is now begging for scraps and they're about to lose everything that they have. Or this could be you. Somebody told you about a person and you made somebody their enemy and now you're about to lose everything by begging. What is that? By begging for scraps? And it's like, you don't have to beg for scraps. Wow. It's so crazy because this is talking about um, two different covenants. One who was born into bondage and one who was born into freedom. So I feel like if you collective, you would be the one born into freedom. You could have told somebody like, you know, you don't really need to do this, etc., etc. You don't need to be with that person, blah, 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 blah. And that person took it upon themselves to make you their enemy over a man or over a woman. They made you their enemy. Not realizing that by making you their enemy, they were losing everything. And they were just like living out their bloodline. Because it says, tell me who you desire to be under the law. Do you not hear the law? For it is written that our Abraham had two sons. The one by a bond woman, the other by a free woman. But who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh, and he of the free woman through promise. Which things are symbolic, for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to Jerusalem, which is now is and is bondage with her children, etc. So basically, Hagar was the one... Um, who was the bond woman. So all her children, her children's children, or her children, right? They're always going to be born in some kind of like spiritual bondage, right? Until they break free from that. The other one, right? Um, is the free woman, right? Which was born through promise. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, rejoice, O barren. You who do not bear, break forth and shout. You who do not travail, for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. So this person could also not have a husband and have like a bunch of kids or like I don't know, but they could have a bunch of kids because it says for the desolate has many more children than she who has a husband. So this person could have like bunch of kids and they're single and you have a husband and it's so crazy too because the way it's coming out is like if this is a single woman with a bunch of kids right she's not married but she's in some sort of bondage like she's stuck she cannot she's not free the married woman right she is not you would think that marriage co coincides with like you know um bondage and stuckness and like um, limitations etc etc right that's not all, all that's be careful who you take marriage advice from because they're giving you marriage advice from their perspective. All right. So someone could be telling you marriage is a business. There's no love. And then the next person could be like marriage is a union, uh, you know, of love and compassion. And then someone else could be like, oh, marriage is, you know, it's just a contract. Doesn't mean anything. That's all from their perspective. So you need to be careful who you're getting marriage advice from. Right. But it doesn't matter. Um, but the married woman. Right. She is free, even though she's married, but she's free. Like, she doesn't have, like, she's, spiritually, she's free. She can do whatever she wants. So, you, let's say, for example, you would be the married woman or the woman in a relationship, whatever the case it is, right? 
whatever it is, you're you're free to do whatever you want. So you could have given somebody some sort of advice about a man or a relationship from personal experience. I feel like this is all over the place. Oh my god. And they made you their enemy. Which is so weird because the same person that you told this truth to was the same person that was trying to be buddy buddy, trying to be your friend, blah 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 blah. So let's say you became the friend and they tried to like bring up someone that they were interested in or someone of your past that they were interested in and you told them the truth, it wasn't what they wanted to hear. They shut you out and they made you their enemy. And they're going to do what they want to do. And that's how they lost everything. Although, if I'm not mistaken, though, at some point in the Bible, Hagar ends up saying that she sees God, like she sees the one who sees her, or something like that. Alright, I gotta, I'm not, I gotta look into that a little bit more. Wow. It says, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. With the son, the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So what's so interesting to me about this too is that whoever this man is, right? Whoever this man is, he was not he was not born of a free woman. He was born of a bond woman. And your spirit could have told you that, or God could have told you that, something could have told you that, like plus the um, including like the experience that you went through, like this man is no good. <clears throat> this man is no good. Whatever whatever happened, however happened, right? You were... No jumping! I keep having to burp. You were separated from this man. Whether this was by an act of God or you were urged to do so separate from this man, right? Then this woman befriended you. Be my friend, let's come out, let's hang out, blah, 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 whatever, right? And you befriended her, you gave, became friends. And then she asks you about this man you told her whatever it is that you told her she did not like that it was kind of meant to be because she was born of a bond woman and he was born of a bond woman so I feel like this woman and this man while you were maybe not at the same time it doesn't seem like but like when you were associated with this bond man you were begging for scraps and God's like you're meant for royalty you have an inheritance you're an heir you're you're gifted you have all of this abundance you're not meant to be begging for scraps so it made the angels cry right so you you were separated and then this woman I'll be my friend be my friend blah 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 and then it's like you told her what you told her and then she started making you beg for scraps and it's like angels are crying because it's like you shouldn't have to beg for friendship but she's only doing that because of what you told her about this bond man they're all bond. Oh, the page is uh, 111. Look. 1011. That's the page number at the top. Oh, right there. See? This is what I was reading. See? Uh, it says right there. Cast out the bond woman and her son. Right? So, I feel like that's what's going on. I feel like and these people and their own timelines that you were dealing with them in, they obviously knew that you were an heir. Like you had blessings and abundance and you were meant for this and this and that. But it's like, and I feel like there's some spite coming from each of them individual. Like this man was like, oh, that's a prince or that's a princess. Or for some of you, it could be like a woman, right? Like, oh, that person is royalty, right? I'm going to beg them. I'm going to make them beg for scraps because they have everything they need. And I don't need to get. I feel like that's really what it was about, too. This man had you begging for scraps, which made the angels cry. Because they, from angels and the cosmic and the God, 
from God's per perspective, it's like you have everything you need. You don't need to beg for scraps. This man was like, you have everything. You have more than me. I'm going to make you beg for scraps. But it was you that had to realize, I don't need to beg for scraps. Yes, I do have everything. You're absolutely right. And I feel like you walked away. And then this woman, it's there's a pattern. You come across people who they notice that you have everything, right? And so they make you work extra hard because it's like, oh, well, you have everything, you know, so I might as well make you work extra harder. Or I make you, I might as well make you beg for scraps because if you're already loved, I'm going to make you work for my love. That makes the angels cry because you don't have to do that. If you do that and you keep doing that and you keep doing that and you keep doing that, you're going to eventually lose all your harvest. Right, by keep giving them and keep giving them all your grains and your grains and your grains and your grains. Next thing you know, you look back in your basket and you don't have any grains left for yourself because it's like you're allowing them to breadcrumb you and you're giving them your grains so that way they can feel good about themselves and you can get that happiness of like, yes, I'm accepted and I'm loved and blah, 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 right? It's a whole thing. But yeah, Galatians 4.17. Basically, you need to be cautious. It's a pattern. And I feel like you could have already picked up on this pattern. You you noticed this pattern. You saw this pattern for what it was. People who want to befriend you and want to love you and want to be around you, but then they see that you have everything you need. And it makes them act out of spite. And it makes them jealous. And it makes them want you to like work extra hard because from their perspective... You don't have to work hard. But well, that's just their perspective, right? From And here's the thing, too. That's their perspective from the time that you are living right now, from, from when they met you, right? But they wouldn't be thinking that maybe 10 years ago, 5 years ago, 2 years ago, 20 years ago, right? That's so they're only seeing, they're only having that opinion from the perspective of being around you in this moment of time or whatever time that you were around them, all right? the full reverse there could be a karmic aries or there could be somebody that just didn't want you to have a new beginning i'm also hearing somebody gets mad because you you always have um the ability to start over and then start over and then start over and then start over all the time like you can do that you have the freedom because you were born of a free woman by promise right you were you can do that and somebody wanted you to be put in positions where you 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 have no way to start over like a bond woman a bond woman is stuck she can't she can't do what you can do which is if i want to move here i'm going to move here if i want to go there i want to go there if i want to work at this job i'm going to work at this job if i want to eat this i'm going to eat this if i want to hang out over there i'm going to hang out if i want to take a nap i'll take a nap you have that freedom because you're born of a free woman right you are a child of the most high god a chosen one right you are a born of a good free family Somebody did not want you to be able to do whatever you wanted to do and be able to start over and have new journeys and travel, right? Not only that, but they didn't want you to have any love, all right? So this could have been a either a karmic Aries or a karmic Pisces, karmic scan cancer. I was going to say scancer. Uh, a karmic scan... Oh, my God. A karmic... Cancer or a karmic Scorpio? Scancer. What is that? Is that... Wow. Somebody could have uh, cancer, breast cancer to be specific. Right? It could be this person that was trying to block you from having a new beginning and love. Now, the repercussions of that is now they have a major dis-ease in the body. And one of those dis-ease can manifest itself as breast cancer. Right? Um, obviously, the breast cover the heart. Scancer. I, I was saying scancer, Right? Scancer is a web app that uses computer vision to assist with early detection of breast cancer.
So whoever this person is or was, um, you know what too? Men can get breast cancer, believe it or not. That's a thing. Men can get breast cancer. And they don't need to have, um, it, it's, 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 it's in the, it's in, oh my gosh, it's in the tissue, right? So it doesn't, like, they don't need to have boobs, but if you have breast tissue, you can get breast cancer. So yes, men can get breast cancer as well. It's rare, I mean, not as rare as you would think, but it's, it's just not as common. I want to say rare, but it's not as common for women, all right? And here's the thing, too, actually... Fun fact, although it's not actually fun, but believe it or not, women who do not have children are uh, at higher risk of getting breast cancer. It's very sad, right? And I know some people will be like, that's not fair because I don't want to have kids. I'm getting punished by God. I mean, I, I don't know. That's a case-by-case -case situation, but... It's uh, scientifically proven that women who do not have children are at higher risk of having breast cancer, right? So again, this could be a woman who doesn't have kids that has breast cancer, or this could be a man. Doesn't uh, Whoever this person is, man or woman, this person could have breast cancer, all right? Because whatever this person was doing, it was like they had no reason... I mean, in their mind, they had reason, but logically and, like, spiritually, there was no justifiable reason as for them to do this, right? There's no reason for them to do this. If this was a woman, this woman did this because you told her the truth about a man that she wanted, right? And she did not want to believe that and see that, and she just thought that you were jealous of... You know, the fact that, you know, you're just jealous because, you know, we could be together and you're not with, together with that man and blah, 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 right? So she did some, you know, she was just following her bloodline as any Bond woman would, right? If this man has breast cancer, it's like you're leaving me and you have everything and I have to stay here and struggle and it's just not fair and, you know, everything comes so easily for you and I'm going to make sure that you don't have any love and you don't start over Right? But keep in mind, these are the same people that sought you out. Right? That's how you know who this, this is. People, these are people who deliberately go out of the way to seek you out, then just to breadcrumb you. Right? And then they wonder why their life is so shit. Because it's a uh, karma. This is what happens. Right? You can't, like, I don't know why people don't think that. It's so funny to me when people operate out of the mindset of like, I don't believe in karma. You know, it's just all about intentions. My friend, <laughs> those go hand in hand. Like, that's like saying, I don't believe in fresh air. And then they'll like walk. I don't know. It's just stupid. Um, they also don't want you to believe in love. Alright. Hierophant. Upright. So, first and foremost, God's like, I'm here. I have entered the chat. Alright. But this is, there's something about a, a union, a contract, a marriage, a divine marriage, a union, a contract. I can't, I just, I'm repeating it. Nine of Pentacles reverse. There's this is the woman, that bond woman. This Nine of Pentacles reverse has been coming out a lot in my readings in different decks. There is a woman around you, uh, very codependent. Her health is on the line. This could be the woman that has cancer or breast cancer. I'm really getting breast cancer. This woman, uh, her health is on the line. Her finances are shot. Her health is shot. She's not that smart. She's not that bright. All right. Um, she could actually also be doing substances as well. In particular... This is a woman that was getting in the way of, like, your happiness and your love and... Which is so weird because, like, all you did was tell her about a man 
who he really was. But because of that, it's like, I don't know, it's so weird, man. Like, if you want that man, have him. Why do you, why are you trying to make me the enemy? I feel like in her mind, she was just trying to, in her mind, she must have thought that you were telling her these things about this man so she wouldn't go after this man. So that way, somewhere down the line, like, in her mind, she thought that you were going to go back after with this man or get back together with this man. Or be with this man. So I feel like that's why she made you the enemy. Because she wanted this man. And in her mind, you're only telling me this because you're jealous. And you don't want him now. But, you know, when I turn my back, you're going to take him. And you're going to want to be with him. Blah, 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 blah. So you are not my enemy. Like, girl, if you don't sit your sick ass down and get a hauls and relax and get some dialysis in you, you'll be fine. Because honestly, realistically, at this point... Like that whole to having to hold in sickness and in health. I feel like whatever man that she did all of this for, and now that she's sick about, like he doesn't even want her. I'm not saying that you want him either, but I'm just saying like, and and I don't know. It's like you ever see like a sick dog, and you just want to put it out of its misery. It's like that. This is this. That's what this Nine of Pentacles in reverse is. It's like any day now. It's, it's hard to look at. Like the man that she did the most for, in his mind, she's hard to look at. Like you just did all of that and you just ended up sick. Or you just did all of that and that man is sick. Nobody wants that sick man. Nobody wants that sick man like... Yeah, look it up. Even men can have breast cancer. Ooh, Six of Pentacles, upright. Yeah, you're being given something. Something is being given to you. What is being given to you? Wow. I feel like the removal of this man and this woman is being removed. Because it says, uh, love fulfills the law. Uh, chapter 5, verse 7 through 12. You ran well who hindered you from obeying the truth. This persuasion does not come from him who caused you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence you in the Lord that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I so preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, now it's 13, for you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Not only, only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. <laughs> 14. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 15. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by another. By one another. So basically, these... <laughs> Somewhere down the line, this man and this woman started becoming... They started going at war with each other right so that's the gift to you they're gonna end up taking each other out there you don't you literally don't have to do anything she's gonna take him out out of spite revenge and by making you her enemy blah, blah blah and then like he's like how dare you make her the enemy and blah, blah blah and like they're both sick and they're both at odds with each other and they're both it's like they both hate each other but they have a common denominator which is you and I've talked about this before in my reading like a year and a half ago. Their common denominator is you, but they hate each other. They're going to take each other out. And that's just something that's going to balance itself out. That's, that's something that's being given to you. The removal of their energy. And you don't have to do anything about it. Alright? All you do is you operate out of love. Right? If they want to be evil to each other and consume each other, they're going to take each other out. Right? 
But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. Yeah. They're enemies to each other. I feel like down the line, they were becoming more and more and more and more enemies to each other. And you were just slowly backing away. Slowly backing away. Right? Or like you were being pulled away and pulled away. And it's kind of like in cartoon characters when there's like a group of people fighting and it's like all you see is like smoke and like an arm here, a leg there, um, an arm, um, someone getting their hair pulled. But then somebody in that puff of smoke and they jump out and they're just looking at the rest of the people fighting in that cloud of smoke and an arm there, a leg there. It's like that. So you're just, they're just fighting each other. I also feel like God is keeping them away from you. Well, God makes sure that you keep your harvest to yourself and enjoy your harvest and you have love and new beginning, etc., etc. Like that's what you're being given. Ugh, I love my Bible so much. I've had this forever. I love it. I refuse to get another Bible. Page of Wands reverse. Yeah, they're blocked. They can't come near you. They can't come around you. They can't come close to you. They cannot. Ooh, Seven of Swords upright. I feel like you were able to, um, with God's protection and God's covering, you were able to kind of like sneak away. You see how there's those two right there all like devouring each other? And this man is like, oh, well, while they're killing each other and eating each other alive, let me just go on about my business right so I feel like in, in this situation the seven of swords will be good be only because you were able to kind of like sneak away God's like okay go 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 right now go right now the empress that's you baby girl that's you baby boy the empress what and the six of wands on the bottom of the deck. Ugh. Six of wands on the bottom of the deck. That's you. The empress, six of wands. You're enjoying this victory, this freedom, this wonderful. Plus you got six of pentacles, six of wands. Yeah. Whatever this was, you, God's like, go, 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 go. <laughs> and you kind of just snuck away. And you're watching these two idiots fight and devour each other and consume each other and be at odds with each other and just and you're just like that's not my problem not nothing to do with me right you're just this empress enjoying your six of wands and enjoying your six of pentacles and they're blocked from bothering you pretty much right and it's so crazy because these are the same people that draw you in they drew you in and they're just eating each other alive and they're being eaten alive as well there's something, yeah, somebody has breast cancer. Mm -hmm. There's stages, right, to cancer. So, um, yeah. I'm also getting you're being, um, applauded or recognized or like, um, recognition. And these two people are just like scuffling with each other in the background, and you're over here <laughs> right you're the empress you're over here and everyone's like empress 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 here here you're just receiving nothing but love it's like you having to burp sorry you're receiving nothing but love uh accolades applause like everyone is just like empress 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 right um, somebody cannot handle this. 
they cannot handle that the fact that you're happy with the four souls reverse. Somebody's re restless and they cannot heal. One of these people, I keep hearing one of these things is not like the other. One of these people, um, if they're it could be both of them. They're mentally unwell. Wait, what? Hmm. So, I just heard something like, um, it says, bear and share the burdens. <clears throat> Chapter 6. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Considering yourself lest you also be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. I did a reading um, a couple days ago. I think it was somebody wanted you to carry their loads, their burdens. I think it was a dark witch, right? And this emperor, like it was like the ten of wands. But in the ten of wands, the deck that I used, like she only had one suitcase, right? It's like somebody wanted you to. I don't know, catch their breadcrumbs and then in return they would give you their burdens. And it's like, well, you know, God would, you know, like what would God do? What would Jesus do, right? WWJD, what would Jesus do, right? But I feel like that was making the angels cry because like you don't need to carry more than, you know, you don't need to beg for scraps of love and friendship and honesty and loyalty and you don't need to. And on top of that, not only were you begging, but you were taking other people's burdens as kind of like proof that like you deserve their love or their loyalty or their friendship or that relationship. And th that was making the angels cry. It was breaking their hearts because it's like you're doing more than necessary in a situation that doesn't even need to be in your energy. That's You don't need to do that at all. You're born free and you have all of these great things for you. But you're not paying attention to it because you're given what little that you had at the time to like overcompensate someone's burdens, right? Someone's illusion of that they are free and they're not, right? So I feel like you guys realize that and you're like, oh shit, I am an empress. I don't need this shit. I'm out. And that just left these people to like argue and fight and devour each other. And I feel like I, there's also something about here that's like God is like not letting you see what they're doing to each other either. God's not showing you. God's not letting you see what happened. What's happening with these two people? And at the same time, God's like telling you, "Go, go. Just don't look at what's happening with these two. Don't pay attention to them. Go. Just, just go. Sneak away. Go enjoy your six of wands. Go enjoy your freedom. Go enjoy your success. Right with the six of wands." Go enjoy what I've been giving you, what belongs to you. Go enjoy that. Yes, my love. A scooter. A scooter? Please. You want a scooter? Okay. Mommy will get you a scooter. I will get you a scooter. Oh, I can't walk on the please. Mommy has to go buy it, baby. So, yeah, that's that. Um... All right, well, I think I'm going to end the reading here. All right, this was fun. My Bible. All right, bye. <laughs>